Sony is about to get another huge boost in the console sales department that Xbox might have trouble keeping up with. But let's talk about why that might not matter as much as you think, but why we should also be giving Sony props. This is really, really smart. So I'm recording this in the past, so this story will have been out for a few days, but while I was taking notes for today's episode, a lot of stuff happened, so I'm recording a lot of episodes all at once. But basically, um, the launch for the PlayStation 5 is scheduled for May 15th in China, and that is a sizable market for the PlayStation audience, meaning they are about to get another massive boost to their console sales. And I'm gonna talk about how this affects Xbox a little bit later, but let's go over why this is big news for Sony first. So in China, PlayStation Plus is gonna be included for players. Uh, first party, party titles are going to be within the service and uh, Lost Soul Aside will also be one of the games. Uh, that will be included if you haven't seen Lost Soul Aside. It's this really, really cool, really, really fast-paced uh, sword combat game. I think Devil May Cry, but mixed with Returnal, I guess. <laughs> um, Pre-orders open today when I'm recording this. I'm recording this on 428, and they, op they come with a two-year warranty. Uh, games like Ratchet & Clank, Sack Sackboy, and Genshin Impact are the goal for the launch period. Uh, the PlayStation Plus collection actually has 12 games in China, and it's launching in China at a bit of a higher price point. It's launching at 500 and 600 US dollars. That's 3,899 RMB or 3,099 RMB on the lower end for the digital and disc edition of the game. And check this out. One hour... <laughs> After this story broke, pre-orders were sold out. So there is a huge demand for consoles in China, just like everywhere else. People are eating up console sales. So as a note, could we, Xbox see a big sales boost in China? Well, not yet, because Xbox has not announced any launch happening in China. There's no pre-order. We have no idea what their lineup is going to be like. But the thing I wanted to sort of talk myself blue in the face about is that I'm curious that when they do launch, could Game Pass be a, a deciding factor in how well or how successful they are in that market? Because remember, Xbox has two SKUs also. One is the Xbox Series S and one is the Xbox Series X, of course, with the S being a really easy gateway for people in the China market to be able to get in to the Game Pass ecosystem. Now, the rumor is that we're already at about 23 million Game Pass subscribers, and that could be a huge boon. So PlayStation is really, really targeting this goal of selling more PlayStation 5s than they did PlayStation 4s year over year, right? And that is a good thing. This is a really, really great deal for the China market. Like, uh, 12 games, two years of warranty. Uh, they're targeting really, really great games for their launch window. And obviously, people will agree with me because it's sold out almost immediately. Hopefully, like five or six of those people are not scalpers just looking to resell. China is known to have a large gray market for consoles where, uh, you know, additional units are sold. So let's look back at numbers for PlayStation as of December 2020 and Xbox and uh, a Switch. This is from Bloomberg via thegamer.com. So here's what thegamer.com wrote via the, the Bloomberg, Bloomberg statistics about these consoles. The Switch has already seen incredible success in China. According to estimates reported by Bloomberg, the Switch has sold 3.95 million units in China. The PS4 sold 3.52 million, while the Xbox One has sold 1.24 million. These estimates are a mixture of lifetime and gray market sales. So what's really interesting about that is, yes, PlayStation has a dominating lead with 3.52 million units sold, but I am actually quite surprised to see that the Xbox One sold 1.24 million units for those territories because with the chip shortage going on and everything, it's just interesting that anybody can even get their console sold in China, period, because obviously they're trying to like 
get these consoles out globally. The fact that uh, they've sold that many in this territory is a, a big indicator that we could be looking at, let's say, I don't know, a 25% adoption rate. That is a hefty amount for Game Pass. That is a hefty amount of new subscribers that could be joining, or maybe they have to do something different. Like, it's interesting that PlayStation Plus seems to be tied in in China. Maybe that is something that uh, China has pretty strict laws. So maybe there's something there with that going on. I'm not sure. And uh, the strategy is different for Xbox. Xbox doesn't care if you play on PC or Xbox, of course. Just reiterating the same talking points I always reiterate, right? Xbox doesn't care where you play. You can play on PC, you can play on Xbox, and I'd be really, really curious to see the Game Pass numbers for China specifically, because the rumor is we are around 23 million sold right now. And Xbox seems to be like they're utilizing Game Pass as sort of this interim before their 23 studios worth of game creators kick into high gear and start releasing big games. So that doesn't solve the market problem. They Xbox always, always has struggled in Asian territories, Japan and China included. So when Phil Spencer was talking about getting into the Japan market and how excited he was about it, obviously that's true because they really need those markets if they want to ever be on top or at least retain the momentum that they have had. Now, I'm going to be making videos over the next few days talking about all these sales numbers because... Honestly, there's some really, really fascinating stuff about uh, how PlayStation plans to take their direction in the future and how I think Xbox comp could compete with that in the future. And um, I also made a video about how Xbox actually did better than I thought and why I'm a little I'm even more excited after reading these numbers. Uh, this isn't a, that won't be a comparative piece to PlayStation. It will just be about Xbox and how well they did. I did the comparative piece the other day. Um, anyway, hey, if you're watching these videos, just just leave something in the comments. I'd be really curious to see what your thoughts would be about how can Xbox compete in the Asian territories where they've universally struggled, right? They do well, but they, they've had a hard time getting their games out there. I think they need a studio acquisition. I think if you want the Japan market, you get Sega at least on board or maybe launching like if they got y Yakuza, I think I think that would do a lot for a few of the different territories. Um, yeah, I don't really know much about like I tried to Google what are the top games played in China, for example, and it's actually really hard to get information about that. I'm going to have to do some more digging. I have to imagine it's similar to, you know, just Asian territories in general. It's, they, they just. There's some really, really cool stuff that I wish I would play. I remember going to TGS for the first time, and there's just, it's a whole different market. There's just so many different games. There's, there's like a ton of MMOs I've never heard of, and they get really, really cool stuff over there. And uh, I'm curious, how would Xbox ever get into that market? And I would love to hear your thoughts, because that's one territory where I'm just like, okay, they've acquired a bunch of studios. What's their plan to penetrate that market? Because they've tried, and they're, they're slowly getting better, but it's not quite there. So let me know what you think about that. And if you like these sort of videos, thank you so much for watching. You can subscribe. I always appreciate it when you guys subscribe. The channel's blowing up. That's great. I never thought that making these loosely scripted vlog news things. Basically, I just talk about the news in the vlog format. That's all it is. And everybody's been super positive about it. And just I'm incredibly thankful that you guys like these videos. I try and le release one video a day at 7 a.m. every day. And that's it. That's all I do. I just talk about the news and <laughs> I schedule it out for the next morning. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, if you want to become a member, YouTube offers memberships. You can uh, check that out. You just click the join button and you can see what's offered there. I just sort of turned it on and I'm trying it out and it seems to be going OK. People like it. So I'm going to keep it going. And if you want to check that out, hit hit the join button. But I'm tired and I'm going to record a few of these because there's so much news to go over today that uh, I'm just going to record a few back to back. But for tonight or this morning, or whenever you're watching this, wow, I hope I do better on the next read. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful evening, day, night. Just have a good time. Just have a good time today. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.